Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video here at Oktoberfest. Last week's video was Fox Hollow Farms and Herb Baumeister, so thank you to everyone who watched that video. But this week, we're taking it to the Big Easy, the Crescent City, New Orleans, Louisiana. So I've lived pretty much near New Orleans my entire life, literally maybe an hour and a half away if I'm pushing it. There's cat hair floating in front of the camera. I can't help it. There are three cats in this room with me and they refuse to leave. If you've never been to New Orleans, New Orleans is such a unique city. Like I haven't been to a lot of cities in the world, but when you go there as a history buff like myself, it's the perfect limbo of new and old. Basically you feel like you're transported to another time in this very old historic place where a lot of unique things are occurring around you, but you're still in the 21st century. So for the two stories today, one of them is going to be really brought in truth, and the other is more of a legend out of New Orleans. But we're going to start with the more true crime, truthful one. I want to say before we start this part of the video, this is a very brutal story. It has a lot of violence in it. It has a lot of things like torture. We're going to be talking about slaves. So if that's something that you're not really interested in, just giving you a fair warning. These two stories are absolutely perfect for Oktoberfest. So let's go ahead and dive into the New Orleans history of the LaLaurie Mansion. So before we get into the actual mansion, all things that occurred, we're gonna actually start out with the person who started it all, the LaLauries. Marie Delphine McCarty was actually born in New Orleans in 1787. Her family were Irish. They had moved from Ireland to New Orleans, Louisiana. They were a very prominent, rich, white family. She was one of five children. There's not much going on with her younger years, but we do know that she was married and then that husband died. She got married again, and then that husband died. And in between those two husbands, she herself had five children. In 1825, she marries her third husband, who is a doctor, and his name is Louis LaLaurie, which is how she has her name, Madame LaLaurie. In 1831, herself and her husband end up buying a property on Royal Street, which is prime real estate in the French Quarter in New Orleans. This is right in the heart of the French Quarter. Even though Delphine LaLaurie was married, it was very uncommon for women to handle their affairs. And she was actually one that did. She managed her own money. She had her own finances straight. She bought the property. She was more like the forerunner for it. And this was very unusual back in these times. We're talking the 19th century here. This is not normal for a woman to gain that much independence. But she did. She kind of went forth and made events. She had her own social circles. She was really kind of the life of the party, I guess you could say. And she was a very independent woman. And she was shown that when she finally built this huge mansion on that property. In 1832 exactly, she builds this three-story mansion on the corner of Royal Street in the French Quarter. And she ended up putting slave quarters also in that mansion, which this story is going to involve slaves, and this was very normal for that time being. It's a part of history. And she built these quarters for her slaves to live in the house with her. She lived there with her husband, Louis, and their two daughters they had together. I really couldn't find any information on what happened to the five kids that she had with her two dead husbands. Because this was prime real estate, they did have neighbors, but this was a huge place. So they hosted a lot of parties. They became aristocrats. They were the socialites of the French Quarter. And Madame LaLaurie was pretty much the head of the family, which again was very rare for a woman to do. She was very popular, but even through this popularity, there were starting to be some cracks in her reputation. There have been rumors going around that Madame LaLaurie, Delphine LaLaurie, was treating her slaves badly. And these rumors started to go through the social circles that she was in. But some people didn't really believe it because they had visited and been to many parties at the LaLaurie mansion and they had seen how she had treated her slaves. And to them, they thought that she treated them just fine, just like normal. And that when she would be in public with them, she would treat them kind. She didn't seem to have any issues, so they kind of just brushed those rumors under the rug. But the rumors are still happening, and some people are getting suspicious, so this is when the authorities actually get involved. The authorities come to her house, and not really searching the house, which is unfortunate, but they kind of give notice to her, saying, 
yes, slaves are your property, but they are humans and there are certain laws with how you treat them. It was kind of just a reminder in case anything was going on, which something was going on, but these people had absolutely no idea what really was going on in that mansion. It was a total house of horrors nightmare, horrific things were happening. And it's kind of a shame they didn't take the rumors more seriously, but things just escalate even more after they bring her this paper telling her how she should be treating her slaves. Stuff starts getting crazy. I've heard both of these stories just going through school throughout the years. The first one is what is referred to as the jumping man. So in the second story of the LaLaurie mansion, all of a sudden there's people in the street and there's neighbors too. This man who was a slave just crashes through the window and falls to his death on the second floor. Now we have every reason to believe that he was living a life of pure hell in that house and he wanted out so bad that he was willing to bust through the window off a second floor and just fall to his death. But this caused some red flags and an even more red flag popped up when a 12 year old girl, Laya, suffered the same fate. Now this is called the hair incident and I've heard this many times too throughout the years. She's a 12 year old girl who's a slave to Madame LaLaurie and she's in charge of brushing her hair. She's brushing her hair one night and it ends up snagging like a tangle was happening and this just sets off Delphine LaLaurie. She gets super angry, grabs a whip and starts chasing Laya throughout the house. Laya is so terrified, she ends up making it to the top of the roof, which this in mind is a three-story mansion. Now there were people down on the street and they had neighbors and there's two separate accounts of what happened. Number one was that Delphine, Madame LaLaurie, pushed her off, causing her to fall to her death or that Laya had tripped and fell off the roof herself. She was buried in a shallow grave on the property and most likely the jumping man was also buried in a shallow grave on the property. Now this is when authorities officially set in. They see what happened, neighbors see what happened, and they start to believe the rumors are true, that she needs more than just a warning. So investigation happens and the LaLauries are found guilty. They're found guilty of illegal cruelty they're found guilty of illegal cruelty to nine of their slaves. You think they would go to jail, you would think something bigger would happen, but remember these times is a very different time. Slave owners really weren't given the correct punishment that they should have when they were mistreating their slaves or doing illegal things to them. So all that happened was that they got a fine, which they had a crap ton of money, so that didn't really matter, and they had to sell their nine slaves that they were mistreating. But in a total ironic situation, which is so unfortunate for these nine slaves that were sold from her was that to get them back, she ends up getting another family member that wasn't close to her to buy them. And then the LaLauries purchased them back. So literally these people got out of this hell house and then they were sold back to them. I didn't really find any information if that was legal, if there was anything binding when she had to sell the slaves that she couldn't ever own them again. I couldn't really find anything. So I don't even know if there were any laws against that. To me, there kind of should have been. If you were mistreating them, what makes you think that you're not going to do it again? But unfortunately, that's just how the times were then. And a lot of people think that she bought those nine slaves back, basically to teach them a lesson. But in April of 1834, another slave has had enough. Now before, LaLaurie always chained her cook to her stove. That was literally how this woman lived. She had been chained to it, she had been sold back, and she had had absolutely enough. She ends up deciding that on the night that the LaLauries are having this huge party with all these people in, that she's going to light the stove on fire and she's willing to sacrifice herself to burn the whole place down. Now, while the fire is going on, it's not becoming this huge vast of like an inferno that the slave anticipated it happening. It was just lighting the stove on fire. The local police and the firemen weren't called. It was just this tiny little fire. LaLaurie was made aware of the fire, but she ends up just keeping the party going. The guests aren't really aware, nothing's happening. She's just like, okay, let's just keep having the party. But soon the local police and firemen are called to the fire. And when they get there, they're shocked to see that this woman is literally chained to the stove. 
The woman literally says, yes, I did it. She confesses and she says, because people in this house disappear. They're brought to the top story of the house and they're never seen again. So Madame LaLaurie must have got word and her husband that the police were there. They were investigating the fire in this giant freaking house party that's going on. They grab some furniture, they grab some art and they head for the hills. It's kind of known that they may have got on a boat and they ended up in France, specifically in the Paris area. Now locals at the party and people just on the street outside of it were trying to help get everyone out, make sure everyone was safe now that the police had shown up. The fire had been put out, everything was good, and then they remember that she did have slaves. So they try to get into the slaves' quarters and realize the door is locked. They couldn't find the key and they literally busted through the entire door to get behind the door. And they were absolutely horrified of what was behind that door in that room. When they walked into this room, there was a person hanging from their neck, but their arms and their legs were like pulled, almost like they were about to tear, just like weight being pulled down. There were people that had broken bones that were just disfigured. There were people that had body parts removed and attached to other parts of their bodies. There were surgical operations that looks like were happening. There was even a woman who had all her bones broken, reset to make her look like a spider or a crab and she was stuffed in a box. There were people with their eyes sewn shut. There were people with holes in their heads, spoons next to them, needles, and most of these people were still alive. They were just wanting to be put out of their misery. The people that opened that door, the locals that have kind of been supporting her and didn't really believe the rumors, were livid. She basically was having like experiments on these people and this is pretty much the reason why American Horror Story made a whole season of this. This is who Kathy Bates' character is based off of, Madame LaLaurie and what she did to these people. There were bones in the floors, there were bones in the walls. So again, the people, the locals were pissed that this was happening. They were outraged. So they decide to basically destroy this mansion. They tore this place apart. And that happened in 1834 and it wasn't until 1888 that the mansion was kind of restored and renovated. It's been a lot of things since 1888. It's been a bar, it's been restaurants, it's been a store, it's been a school, it's been all kind of stuff. It is known to be very haunted and that's the kind of the stories that I grew up with and how I learned of the LaLaurie Mansion. The jumping man that jumped out of the second story window, that window was boarded up. It was kind of known that that was where he jumped out and sometimes you may see a man standing in the window. Sometimes you hear the little girl crying, you hear the girl screaming or even see her, which would be the 12 year old girl, Laya. But there is one person that has been inside the LaLaurie Mansion that actually owned it. And in 2007, that person was Nicolas Cage. It's kind of weird that he bought it. He didn't really say why he bought it. It actually ended up being foreclosed two years later. So he only had it for two years. So whether he didn't know, because basically Royal Street and the French Quarter is prime real estate these days. So maybe he just wanted a place in New Orleans. Maybe he liked the city so much, or maybe he did know the history of the place. In 2009, it was foreclosed with Nicolas Cage, so it ended up being sold to a private owner. So there's no tours in the place, like I said, but you can walk past it on Royal Street. What an insane, crazy part of history that is. Like, that woman was definitely 100% evil in what she did to those people. It's crazy that that's actually truthful. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying Oktoberfest and, frankly, any videos here on my channel. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave so you don't miss any more Oktoberfest videos or any future videos here on my channel. And thank you guys so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!